A few years ago, Chaimayam J. Ko, a professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign's College of Veterinary Medicine, received an urgent call that would set the course for a deeply emotional and scientific journey. On the other end of the line was a distraught man, his voice trembling with grief as he explained what had just happened. His beloved dog had run into traffic and been struck by a truck, dying instantly. In his anguish, he had only one question for Ko, is it possible to clone my dog? For Ko, the question wasn't as unexpected as it might seem. As an expert in genetics and cloning with over 20 years of experience, he had worked on similar projects before. He knew the answer right away, yes, cloning is possible. But that certainty came with a caveat. Cloning requires healthy, intact DNA, and once an animal dies, its cells begin to degrade quickly. Time was of the essence. Ko and two of his students rushed to the man's home, an hour's drive away, and took skin cells from the recently deceased dog. Back in the lab, they revived and cultured the cells. Theoretically, they now had the genetic material to create a perfect clone of the dog, but the process was far from straightforward. The science of cloning is complex, and success was not guaranteed. Fast forward to 2005, when a team of scientists in South Korea successfully cloned the first dog, producing two Afghan hound puppies from the ear cells of a dog named Tai. Tragically, one of the puppies died soon after birth, but the other, named Snuppy, lived a full, impressive 10 years. Snuppy was hailed as a scientific breakthrough, and Ko, who had been an advisor to the South Korean team, had a front row seat to the historic achievement. But as scientists celebrated, they also raised ethical concerns. Dolly the sheep, the first mammal to be cloned in 1996, had died young from lung disease and arthritis. Snuppy too passed away prematurely, succumbing to the same cancer that had killed Ty. And so, the questions began, does cloning result in animals that age faster, or are more susceptible to disease? In 2017, the South Korean team continued to investigate these issues by cloning Snuppy's own stem cells, hoping to shed light on the health and longevity of cloned animals. Over the years, the science of dog cloning has advanced, with a handful of commercial companies now offering pet cloning services for the right price. One such company, Viagen, charges a staggering $50,000 to clone a dog. And if you're wondering, they also clone cats at $25,000 a pop. Despite the steep cost, some wealthy pet owners are willing to pay, motivated by the desire to preserve a piece of their cherished companion. One of the most famous cases is Barbara Streisand, who shocked the world by revealing that she had cloned two of her dogs, Miss Violet and Miss Scarlet, after the death of her beloved Coton de Tullier, Samantha. Streisand explained that she was so devastated by the loss of her dog after 14 years of companionship that she wanted to keep a part of Samantha with her. It was easier to let Sammy go if I knew I could keep some part of her alive, she wrote in an op-ed for the New York Times. For Streisand, cloning offered a way to preserve the essence of the dog she loved. But her words also spoke to a deep and universal truth. Asterisk the bond we share with our pets is profound, and the idea of losing them forever can be unbearable. But while cloning can offer the illusion of preserving a beloved pet, it comes with costs that go beyond money. The process is fraught with emotional and ethical complexities asterisk, says Alexandra Horowitz, a leading expert in canine cognition at Columbia University. She recognizes the impulse behind cloning, the desire to hold on to a dog's memory, but she also warns that it oversimplifies what dogs are. One of the great sadnesses about living with dogs is that the time we share with them is so short, Horowitz says. Unfortunately, people overlook a great deal about what cloning actually is to be satisfied with the result. The process itself is a delicate and invasive procedure. It begins with extracting cells from the deceased animal, followed by a laborious process of egg retrieval from a living dog. 
The genetic material from the donor animal is inserted into the egg, and an electrical shock triggers the embryo to start dividing. The embryo is then implanted into a surrogate mother, who will carry the clone to term. Despite the scientific advancements, the cloning process is highly inefficient, only a fraction of pregnancies result in a viable birth. And even then, the emotional toll is significant, with many cloned dogs suffering from health problems, including premature death. Moreover, the ethics of cloning cannot be ignored. Critics argue that the cloning industry exploits animals, creating a canine underclass to serve as biological substrates for human desires. Bioethicist Jessica Pierce has written about the moral implications, pointing out that the process generates a vast, invisible system of suffering to create genetic replicas of our pets. And then, there's the question of what owners are really getting when they clone a dog. Many believe that cloning will reproduce the same dog, but the reality is far more complicated. While the clone shares the same DNA, its personality will inevitably differ. You can clone the look of a dog, but you can't clone the soul, Streisand herself admitted. Dogs are not just products of their genetics, they are shaped by the lives they lead and the experiences they share with their owners. Each dog is unique, not just because of its genes, but because of the time it spends with you, learning, growing, and bonding. Despite the scientific perfection of the cloning process, it cannot replicate the connection that forms over years of companionship. The love you have for your dog isn't just a reflection of its genetic makeup, it's the result of the life that's lived alongside you. In this way, a cloned dog will never be exactly the same as the original, no matter how much it resembles the dog you've lost. While cloning offers a way to capture a part of the animal you loved, it ultimately cannot restore the deep, irreplaceable bond you shared. The dog you adored is gone, and no amount of science can bring back the specific life that you live together. As Horowitz poignantly notes, the essence of your dog isn't in its DNA, but in the shared history you created. Cloning may bring a new puppy into your life, but it can never recreate the soul of the one you lost.